In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept known as inductive reactance. So what exactly is inductive reactance? Well, inductive reactance is the resistance that exists inside an inductor as a result of the induced EMF. So before we define mathematically, before we state the equation for inductive reactance, let's answer the following question. So how exactly does the voltage and the electric current vary with respect to time inside an inductor that is connected to an alternating electric current? So let's suppose we have the following electric circuit in which we have our inductance with inductance given by L that is connected to an AC source, so a voltage source that creates an alternating electric current. Now in a previous lecture we were able to describe the electric current that will flow inside our inductor as we close the following switch. So once we close the switch, electric current will begin to flow through the loops of our inductor. And the equation that describes the electric current at any given moment in time is given by this equation. So, our electric current I is equal to I0, the peak electric current, multiplied by the cosine of omega t, where omega is the angular frequency. So, now we know how our electric current changes with respect to time. What about the voltage difference? How does the voltage vary across our inductor as our alternating electric current travels through the loops of our inductor. So let's begin by applying Kirchhoff's second rule, also known as Kirchhoff's loop rule. So Kirchhoff's loop rule essentially states that if we sum our changes in voltage across a loop inside our electric circuit, the sum will equal to zero. So as we go from this position to this position, there is an increase in voltage given by the voltage created inside our voltage source. Let's say that is given by V. Now as we go from this point back to our initial point, there is a drop in voltage that is equal to the voltage or the induced EMF that exists inside our inductance. So minus L multiplied by the derivative of our electric current I with respect to time. And this sum is equal to zero by Kirchhoff's loop rule. So now let's take this and bring it to the right side. So we see the voltage across our inductor is equal to the following result. So now let's take the I, let's take this I and let's replace it with the following equation. So I naught multiplied by cosine of omega multiplied by T. So the voltage across our inductor is equal to the inductance multiplied by the derivative of this entire equation with respect to time. So if we take the derivative of this, this will become negative sine multiplied by I naught and by the chain rule, we bring out the omega. So we see that the voltage is equal to negative multiplied by omega multiplied by the inductance L multiplied by I naught multiplied by sine of omega multiplied by T. So now let's apply our trigonometric identity. So we know that sine of any angle theta is equal to negative of the cosine of that same angle theta plus 90 degrees. So we can essentially replace sine with negative cosine of theta plus 90 degrees. And that's exactly what we do in the following equation. So the voltage across our inductor is equal to the product of omega, the angular frequency, multiplied by L, the inductance, multiplied by the peak electric current given by I naught, multiplied by the cosine of omega t plus 90. 
So notice, because we have a negative and a negative, that negative will disappear. So this is essentially the equation that describes how our voltage varies with respect to time inside our inductor that is connected to an alternating electric current. So, notice that if the cosine of this quantity is equal to 1, that will imply the voltage will equal to the peak voltage V0, which will equal to this multiplied by this multiplied by this. So, our peak voltage V0 is equal to omega multiplied by the inductance multiplied by our peak electric current I0. So let's take this equation and let's plot it on the xy plane as shown. And let's also take this equation and let's also plot it on the xy plane. So we've plotted the following two equations. So this equation, this curve, essentially describes how our electric current I varies with respect to time, where time is our x-axis and the y-axis is our electric current. So we see our current essentially oscillates between the peak current and the negative peak current. Now what about the voltage? So we see that the voltage also oscillates between the peak voltage and the negative peak voltage. So we have our time is the x-axis and the y-axis is our voltage. Now what exactly is the difference between these two curves? So we see that these curves are not exactly in phase. In fact, they're at a phase by exactly 90 degrees. So notice that these two graphs are not out are out of phase by 90 degrees. That is, the electric current lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. Now, what exactly is the relationship between I0 and between V0? So we want to build a relationship, and this is exactly where we're going to define inductive reactants using an equation. So recall that inside a resistor with a resistance given by R, we can use Ohm's law to essentially define a relationship between V0 and I0. So inside a resistor, the peak voltage V0 is equal to the peak current I0 multiplied by the resistance, where this resistance essentially describes the resistance to our electric current flow. Now, in the same exact way, we can define the resistance inside an inductor known as the inductive reactants that exist because of the induced EMF using the following equation which is analogous to Ohm's law. So inside an inductor, V0, our peak voltage, is equal to the product of I0, the peak electric current, multiplied by XL, where XL is simply known as our inductive reactance. It also has units given by ohms. Now, if we go back to the following equation, we see that in this equation, V0 is equal to omega multiplied by L multiplied by I0. This quantity is simply our inductive reactants. So, inductive reactants XL is equal to the product of omega, the angular frequency, multiplied by our inductance L. Now, because omega is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the frequency, we see that we can replace omega with this, and our inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the frequency multiplied by our inductance. Now, let's conclude our lecture on inductive reactants with the following statement. So, inductive reactance is essentially the resistance to our current flow that exists inside our inductor and that exists as a result of our back EMF, as a result of our induced EMF that exists inside the loops of our wire of our inductor that is connected to an alternating electric current. So our inductive reactance impedes the flow of our electrons 
through the wires of our inductor and it's given by the following equation. 